the concepts that we have studied in the previous class. So in the previous class we have studied the definition of a context free grammar and we have designed few grammars for the given language and problem statements. So in this class we will be continuing to learn more problems based on generation of grammar rules and we are concentrating on the context free grammars. So we will pick up the problems one by one. Look at the first problem. So the language given is L is equal to A to the power of N plus 1 and B to the power of N where the constraint on the N is greater than or equal to 0. So the minimum value of N is N is equal to 0 and more. So you can see that this is a case where all the occurrences of A's are going to come first and then all the B's are going to come. So what is the constraint on the N that is that is nothing but the occurrences of A and B. If there are N number of B's there has to be N plus 1 number of A's. So if the number of B's is 3 then the number of A's has to be 1 greater than that. So it has to be 4. So let us design something that we have already done. So we know how to produce A to the power of N and B to the power of N from the previous classes. So we will write the grammar rule for that. So that is nothing but A S B. A S B. So this is going to generate N number of A's and N number of B's. But then it is not what we want. So we need the number of A's to be 1 greater than the number of B's. So this is going to produce equal number of A's and B's. How to make this number of A is greater than 1? So if S somewhere substitute for a, a at the end of the derivation, then obviously if there are equal number of A's and B's, substituting an extra A will give us the condition A to the power of N plus 1. So there is one extra A compared to the number of B's. So this is the grammar rule that we form for the given problem statement. Let us look at the next problem statement. So the language is defined as it contains a to the power of n, b to the power of n plus 1. So here the number of b's has to be 1 greater than the number of a's. So we know the grammar rule that produces equal number of a's and b's. Also all the a's will appear before all the b's and that rule is a s b. So this is the rule that is producing equal number of A's and B's with all the A's appearing before all the B's. Next we require that the number of B's has to be greater than the number of A's. So we know that in the last step of the derivation if we substitute here somewhere an extra B that will result in a plus 1 number of B's than the number of A's. So this is the grammar rule that we can write. So here you can see that there it is the same variable for which we are doing the substitution. Here also it is the same variable for which we are written two rules. So this can be equivalently written as S goes to A S B B. So this is a or. So S can be either substituted for the first production or it can be substituted for the second production. So next we are going to learn the next problem. So the given problem statement is a to the power of n, b to the power of n plus 2. So here there has to be n number of a's and n plus 2 number of b's. So 2 b's have to be more than the number of a's. So how do we write the grammar rule? So we can write it as a's, s goes to a s b. So here equal number of A's and B's are produced. How to make sure that there are plus 2 B's? So S goes to B, B. So you can take the similar lines of explanation for this problem. So there has to be one extra B. So single B is written here. There has to be two extra B's. So therefore two B's are written here. So this is the rule that we write for the given language. Say we look at the next language. So it is a to the power of n, b to the power of 2n. 
So, there has to be 2 times the number of A's that are there in the string. So, suppose if you have 2 A's, there has to be 4 B's. So, therefore, each time uh, A is produced, there has to be 2 B's that are produced simultaneously. Once the second A is produced, 2 more B's has to be produced simultaneously. Suppose if you have 3 A's, then the number of B's has to be 6. So, if this is n, this is 2 times n. So, this is 3 and this is 6. So, what happens here? Every time A is produced, it should have matching of 2 B's. So, the second time it has to produce 2 more B's. Third time A appears, it has to produce 2 more B's. So, therefore, how do we write the grammar rules for this? So, S goes to each time a A is produced, how many B's has to be produced? 2 B's has to be produced. The same pattern ha can repeat n number of times for n ranging from 0 to n plus 1 and so on, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, which is a variable that is generating the same pattern once again? So, the same pattern A and matching 2 B's are produced by this S. So, therefore, we write a S here. So, there is also possibility that n is equal to 0. So, first time if n is equal to 0, we can just have a epsilon because n is equal to 0. So, therefore, 0 number of A's will be there and also 2 multiplied by 0 will be 0. Therefore, 0 A's and 0 B's can appear in the string. So, therefore, we will have S goes to epsilon. So, we will have to be careful here. So, wherever there is a condition of n is equal to 0. So, we, we, we should have something that produces an epsilon as the string from the starting symbol. So, this is the rules that we write for the given language. So, we will look at the next set of problems here. So, we will look at the first problem statement. To generate the language of all palindrome over sigma is equal to a comma b. So, we know that the palindrome is the one that reads the same from both the ends of the string. So, if you read it from starting from the left to right or if you read it starting from right to left, it should read the same string. So, therefore, the alphabet is a comma b. So, the string is made up of a's and b's. So, if you have a a in the first place, you should have a in the last place. So, this is what is required. If you have a b in the first place, it should be b in the second place. So, here if you have a second place b, so second last symbol should also be a b. So, if we have a a here, then the last symbol from the left hand side and the right hand side, both the sides should be a a. So, in between you can have anything this anything can either be a a or it could be a b or it could be a epsilon. So, there are three things possible somewhere in between this generation of a's and b's. So, therefore, we will write the production rules. We will start writing the production rules for this. So, first rule is a s a. So, if the first symbol is a a, we expect that the last symbol is also a a because whether you read it from the left hand side or from the right hand side. So, both the places it has to start with a a and end with a a. It is not necessary that the string always starts with a a. It is possible that it starts with a b. So, therefore, we write b s b. In case we have a b, there has to be a matching b again. So, in between the A's recursively you can have the second symbol as A or the second symbol as B. Again as the third symbol you may have A or B and so on since it is the same variable. So, as I told in between these things it can be recursively these two which produces more number of A's and more number of B's or it could end with either the derivation can end with either A or b or epsilon. So, see here in case I put a a here 
this is also a palindrome in case if I put a B here it is also a palindrome or if I do not put anything and just put an epsilon here still it is a palindrome. So, A B B A A B B A. So, the three possibilities of the substitution in between for S has to be written. So, therefore, S goes to A, S can either go to B or S can go to epsilon. So, this is going to produce the set of all palindromes over the symbols A comma B. So, let us apply this substitution and check if we are generating the palindromes. So, we will do a simple derivation. So, S goes to B S B. So, I have not started with A S A. I prefer to start the string with B. So, therefore, I have used this production. In case I prefer to generate a string that starts with an A, then we would use this production. So, we have used B S B. So, next S goes to, for this S, I can have A S A and this B, I am going to write it as it is. So, what have we done here? So, recursively we may produce more number of A's and more number of B's every time. And then next B A A S A A B. So, this A B and B A I have retained from the previous step. So, this is substituted for A S A. Next I prefer to substitute B A A B a a b. So, here I have used this production. So, where s goes to b is used. So, s is substituted for b. Next, we have arrived at a string already and we see that it reads the same from both the ends. So, b a a b a a b b a a b a a b. So, this has become a palindrome. So, likewise you can have any choice of string and apply the steps of derivation to derive the strings from the rules of the grammar. Next, we will check the language. L is equal to 0 to the power of m, 1 to the power of m, 2 to the power of n. And there is a constraint given on the m. So, m has to be greater than or equal to 1 and also n has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, what do we observe with the uh, occurrence of 0, 1 and 2? you can see that 0 and 1 has to be the same number of times and 2 has to be n number of times. So, therefore, there is a pattern here. So, 0 and 1 follow the same pattern. So, both are appearing m times and then 2 has got a different pattern. It is appearing n times. So, therefore, I may choose this as a and b. So, I can have a variable which defines the occurrences of 0 and 1 and another variable called as b that defines the occurrence of 2. So, therefore, we write s goes to a and b. So, a is defining 0s and 1s, b is defining 2s. So, therefore, next we write a. We have to concentrate on how to write the occurrences of 0s and 1s. So, what is it given here? m is greater than or equal to 1. So, the minimum occurrence of 0 and 1 is 1. So, therefore, we just write 0, 1. So, this is the minimum number of times the 0s and 1s has to occur. So, therefore, this a should be at least 1, 0 and at least 1, 1. It is not restricted to 1. So, there is another condition greater than 1. So, it has to be more number of zeros and more number of 1s. So, we already know how to produce more number of zeros and more number of 1s with this problem a to the power of n, b to the power of n. So, how do we write that? So, we will write 0 a 1. So, if you recursively apply this 0 a 1, for every 0 there has to be a 1. So, 0 a 1. Next, for a if I write 0 a 1, this is 1, this is 0. So, I have produced two zeros, two ones. Next is three zeros, three ones. So, like that you may produce any number of zeros and any number of ones. So, at last you may have zero, one. So, therefore, this is for equal to one and this is for greater than one. We are talking about the number of occurrences. So, this is equal to one and this is greater than one. So, that is how we write. Next is 
we have to define the pattern for B which is the occurrence of 2. So, what is the constraint which is defined on 2? So, see here n should be greater than or equal to 0. So, the first constraint is equal to 0, the second constraint is greater than 0. So, the number of 2's can be equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, then B has to become epsilon. Then we also have greater than 0. So, gr if you want to produce greater than 0 occurrences of B's, then you recursively produce them with 2B. So, if you write 2B here, I can produce more number of 2's, 1 and more. So, this is 0 and this is 1 and more. So, this is equal to 0 and this is greater than 0, 1 and more. So, therefore, if it is equal to 0, I will substitute a epsilon and if it is greater than 0, I can recursively produce them with 2b. So, if in case I want only 1, then this b will be epsilon. If I want 2, then I will write 2b and for this b, I am going to say again 2b. So, therefore, this b will now become epsilon if I want 2 2's. If I want 3 2's, then 2b start with 2b, then this b will become another 2b, this b is going to become 2b and this b will become epsilon in the. So, what are you producing? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So, you can produce more number of 2's. So, this is how you frame the rules for the grammar, you have to always keep in mind the constraints given on M and N which are the occurrences of the symbols given in the language. So, we will see the next problem now. Obtain a grammar to generate L is equal to W such that the number of A and the number of B's which are there in the W, they have to match. So, therefore, and here you should also observe that when we are concentrating on the number of symbols in the string, we are not concentrating the order in which they appear. They can appear in any order. All possible strings have to be generated by the grammar. So, how do we do that? So, first of all, we will write S goes to A S B and S goes to B S A. So, from the previous problems, you would have had an idea why we wrote this because once an A is produced, a matching B has to be there. So, so that they are always equal in number. In case the string starts with a B, it should have a matching A so that always the number of A's and B's have to be equal. So, in this case, let us see what are the strings that are produced. So, A, then we have A S B. So, you can have strings such as A A and B B, you can have B B and A A. So, such strings can be produced. Next A B A B. So, alternate symbols A B A B, B A B A can also be produced. So, you can have make the derivations and check. So, I am here what I am doing is I am applying the same production two times. So, therefore, I have got this and here I have applied one of this and one of this. Here I have applied this one first and this one. So, alternatively I am applying the rules here same rule is applied twice. Okay. So, first rule is applied twice, the second rule is applied twice, first the first rule is applied after that second rule I have applied here first second rule is applied after that first one. So, these are the only types of strings that can be produced by this set of productions. So, we have to also examine are these the only kind of strings that can be produced when we are talking about the number of A's is equal to the number of B's. Actually, this is not the entire list, it is not an exhaustive list of the strings. So, there is one more kind of strings that cannot be produced by only these alone. Third type of A followed by the same symbol and then a A. This can never be produced by only these two symbols. Okay? So, if it starts with a B, it may have two A's in between and then have a B. Still equal number of A's and B's is preserved. 
So therefore, in order to have this kind of strings that three kind these three kinds of strings will give you the exhaustive list of all these strings that can be produced for equal number of A's and equal number of B's. So therefore, S goes to S S is another production that we are going to add. So we will see if this kind of strings can be formed by this production. So S goes to S S. Okay. So, this S can go to A S A S B and this one can go to B S A. So, here we can also define S goes to epsilon because the number of A's and the number of B's should be equal and they can also be a 0. So, therefore, S goes to epsilon. Also in the derivation, you should be able to terminate the derivation, therefore we add it. So, what is the string that is formed here? A B B A. So, now with this production, we are able to produce the third kind of string that is A B B A. So, this is how we write the grammar rules for the given language L is equal to w such that the number of a's in w is equal to the number of b's in w. Next we will look at the set of problems here. So, we consider L is equal to a to the power of n, b to the power of n, where n is greater than or equal to 0 and m is always greater than n. So, now in case n is equal to 0, which is the number of times it has to appear minimum. Okay, so, that is 0, then m is equal to 1 or more, 1 or more. So, therefore, it has to be if a is not there, at least 1 b has to be there and more b's can be there. So, I write b b star. Next, if n is equal to 1, then m is equal to 2 or more because m has to be greater than n. So, it has to be 2 or more. So, how do we write the b's here? So, it has to be the string has to be n is equal to 1. So, 1 a, a has to be there. After that 2 or more b's has to be there. So, 2 compulsory more can be written as b star. Okay? So, next n is equal to 2, m is equal to 3 or more, 3 or more. So, we write two A's here and we write three B's. So, this much is compulsory, then you may have B star. Okay? So, B star. So, this is how the pattern will look like. Okay? So, what do we observe here? So, we observe that for every A, there has to be a B. For every A, there has to be a B. Then, the number of b's have to be one greater or more, one or more. So, here also equal number of a's, equal number of b's, then extra b, b star. So, therefore, how do we write the production? So, s goes to, first of all, we will write this pattern which occurs. Okay? So, this is a, s, b. So, this is for equal number of a's and equal number of b's. All right? So, we will write the grammar rules for this. So, we have S goes to A and B. So, A will define the number of occurrences of small a and B will define the number of occurrences for small b. So, what is A? A has to be A, A, B. So, why did we write this? Because there are equal number of A's and equal number of B's or else it can just be a B. So, in case, in case we do not have the A's, alright. So, in case we do not have the A's here, okay. So, directly this A should just be substituted for. So, we write the grammar rule A goes to A, A, B. So, this is 
where we are producing equal number of A's and equal number of B's. So, in case the A's are never present, in case the A's are never present, then the A part should become 0. So, we see the first case where n is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1. So, therefore, this entire A part which is generating the A's should become epsilon. Next is B. B is generating the number of B's. So, what is this number of B's which is extra other than the equal number of A's and equal number of B's? There has to be at least one B. So, we write here B or it can be B star. So, B star is more B's. So, more B's is written with B and B. So, recursively this produces more number of small B's. So, this is how we write the grammar rule for the given language a to the power of n, b to the power of m. Next, we will look at the next pro problem. So, this is the ninth problem. So, L is equal to a to the power of i, b to the power of j, c to the power of k, i plus j is equal to k. So, how do we write this? So, a to the power of i, b to the power of j and c to the power of k. This is a given problem. So, given the condition on k, we can split it and write a to the power of i, b to the power of j, c to the power of i, c to the power of j because k is i plus j occurrences of c. So, if you shuffle this, we will get a to the power of i, b to the power of j, c to the power of j and a to the c to the power of i. So, you can see we have matched the occurrences of A's and C's and we have matched the occurrences of B's and C's. So, now write the grammatical rules for this language. So, the first thing that we see is for every A there has to be a matching C. So, therefore, we know how to get it. So, this is A S C. So, for every A there has to be a C. For every second A there has to be a second c and so on. It is all possible that this can be 0. So, i can just be 0. So, that means a occurrences will not be there and c occurrences will not be there. What appears in between only that can come. Okay? So, we have taken this variable as s and this we will consider this as k. So, therefore, in case there are 0 number of A's and 0 number of C's for i, therefore, this k has to appear. So, therefore, we will write k here. So, that means, this is the case where we have written here i is equal to 0. In case i is equal to 0, then only k should come, which is only the occurrences of B's and C's. Now, k has to generate B, k, C recursively. So, why B, K, C recursively? Because there can be more number of B's. If there are more number of B's, there has to be matching number of C's. So, therefore, we write B, K, C. There is also a condition that J is equal to 0. So, since J is equal to 0, we have to be able to substitute this entire pattern into a epsilon. Okay? So, therefore, this is the condition for J is equal to 0. So, this is how we write the grammar rules for the given language a to the power of i, b to the power of j and c to the power of k. So, now we we'll look at the next problem. Given language L is equal to a to the power of n, b to the power of n minus 3, where n is greater than or equal to 3. So, what do we observe here? So, as a note, we see that the number of a's has to be 3 more than the number of b's. So, therefore, the number of a's should be should be 3 more than 3 more than the number of a's and b's. So, a's and b's. So, in case if there is 3 a's because n is greater than or equal to 3. So, minimum number of a's can be 3. So, if there are 3 a's, then b has to be n minus 3. So, the b should never be there. Next, in case the number of a's is 4, then 
there has to be 1 b. So, this is what we are doing. Okay. So, in case the number of a's is 5, okay. so 5 minus 3 there has to be 2 b's. So, what do we see here? We see equal number of a's and b's in this pattern. Here also we see equal number of a's and b's. How many extra a's are there? 3 extra a's are there. Here how many extra a's are there? 3 extra a's are there. So, we will see if the same pattern can be produced. In case there are 6 a's, then how many b's have to be there? 3 b's have to be there. So, therefore, this is what equal number of a's and b's. How many extra a's are there? 3 extra a's. So, once we know this pattern, we can write the grammar. So, grammar rule has to be, there has to be 3 extra a's, right, before we produce equal number of a's and b's. So, this variable a should produce equal number of a's and b's. So, how do we produce equal number of a's and b's? We already know a to the power of n, b to the power of n. So, therefore, a goes to a capital A b. Okay. Is it possible for this part which is the a to be null? So, we see that there is nothing here. Okay. So, this was the minimum number of a's that were there. So, it is all possible that this a whatever we have can be a epsilon. So, therefore, we have to put an epsilon. So, this is a minimum condition where this becomes an epsilon, then a was 3. For the rest of it, 3 a's will be there and equal number of a's and b's will be there. So, this is the grammar rule that we will write for this grammar. So, next we will concentrate on the language and the grammar where there is some operator in between the languages that we produce. So, when we design the grammar also, we have to keep in mind the operators that are used. So, here the concatenation operator is used and here the union operator are used. Okay? So, in the grammar, the concatenation is just S1, S2. So, if this is the grammar which is produced for the first language and this is the grammar which is produced for the second language, we just have S1, S2 and then the union is S1 or S2 because it is L1 or L2. So, the grammar should be able to produce something, some string which is generated by L1 concatenated with L2. So, if this is L1, all the strings that belong to the language, all the strings that belong to the language. So, one string from here should be concatenated with one string from here. This is how the grammar has to produce the strings. Okay? And here, the grammar has to produce something such that the string should either be belong to L1 or it should belong to L2. Okay? So, therefore, we have a or here where S1 is the start symbol of the first language and S2 is the start symbol of the second language. So, if I choose S1, then I will be choosing L1 out of L1 and L2. If I choose S2 in the beginning, then I am actually choosing L2 between this L1 and L2. So, that is the concept that we are going to use. So, we will generate the grammars first. For the first language, I will call this as grammar G1. Okay? So, for G1 we will generate, we have already done this problem and the explanation a to the power of m, b to the power of uh, m, where n is greater than or equal to 0, m is greater than n. So, therefore, S1, I am not going to say it is simply S, since we are generating two different grammars, I am going to name the start symbols as S1 for the first grammar and S2 for the second grammar. So, S1, okay. so S1 goes to A, S1, B or B, B. So, then B goes to B, B or epsilon. So, this is equal number of A's. So, if n is equal to 0, that means if the A is never present, only B's have to be produced. So, B have to be always 1 greater than the number of A's or it should be more, 1 or more, Okay, 1 greater or more. So, this small b is creating 1 greater and this capital B is creating more. So, for the same B, 1 or more okay? or it can be epsilon, stop, stop it at epsilon. Then we produce G2 which is 0 to the power of n, 1 to the power of 2n. So, this is simple. So, I am going to take the start symbol of the second grammar as S2 goes to 0, S2, 1, 1. So, there are 
1 2 so n 2 n ok so epsilon so this is the grammar for g 2 ok so once we have done this we have to pick up the first thing first so l is equal to l 1 concatenated with l 2 so if you are considering this we will write the grammar rules now so s now it becomes s because i am producing one single grammar from two different things so s1 s2 what is s1 s2 so s1 is the strings that are produced by the grammar 1 s2 will always generate the strings that are produced by the grammar 2 so i am concatenating both of them that is what they have asked so the language one string from here string from here both have to be concatenated so therefore s1 dot s2 now go on writing all the rules of the grammars so s1 goes to a s1 b or bb b goes to bb or epsilon next s2 goes to 0 s2 1 1 or epsilon so this is the grammar for the given first sub question l is equal to l1 dot l2 so the second sub question is l is equal to l1 union l2 so l1 or l2 so how do we write s goes to s1 or s2 so all the strings that is produced by the language 1 or all the strings that are produced by the grammar 2 so s1 go on writing all the productions one by one one below the other so s1 goes to a s1 b or bb b goes to b b or epsilon s2 goes to 0 s2 1 1 or epsilon so this is what we write as an answer for the rule 2 the sub question 2 l is equal to l1 union l2 ok so this is the solution for the given problem statement thank you